welcome to the Misophonia Podcast. This is Season 5, Episode 20. My name is Adil Ahmad, and I have Misophonia. This week I'm talking to Nathan, who lives in Colombia. Nathan is 19 and taking a break after high school and focusing on art and design. We talk about his experiences with Misophonia in Colombia, fried food, and his plans for the future. Nathan also triggers himself a lot, so that's actually an interesting aspect for him. And we talk about our shared passion for greater neurodiversity awareness. Oh, and I have links to all of Nathan's accounts where he posts his art and his store page in the show notes. I want to give a shout out to our latest Patreon sponsor, Aaron. Thank you so much for your contribution to the show. It really means a lot. And uh, if you feel like helping... You can go to patreon.com slash misophonia podcast and learn about the various levels and swag I'm giving away. An even easier free thing you can do is just share the podcast with friends on social media or leave a quick rating or review wherever you listen. All right, now here's my conversation with Nathan. Uh, Nathan, welcome to the podcast. Good to have you here. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> I was really excited. Yeah. So, yeah, why don't you tell me... Um, a bit about kind of yeah whereabouts you are and, and what you do. Um, well, I'm 19. I live in Colombia. I'm like I'm from here. Mm -hmm. Um, and I mean at the moment I'm kind of a freelancer, designer, whatever it comes up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I'm not studying or really working. I'm just mm -hmm. doing my thing and existing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That sounds good. Um, so you're 19. You finished. Uh, you finished high school, and you, you mm -hmm. kind of went out, and you're freelancing as a as a designer. Um, mm -hmm. And how how's it going? Like, are you, um, you know, what? Is, some people go to college. Some people uh, maybe take an office job. Did you decide that? Uh, hey, you know, I kind of want to go on my own because maybe there's some misophonia basis for that, or uh, just the way things shook out for you. Um. That a little bit of both. I kind of knew I wanted to take some time after high school, yeah. um, for sure because he finished it right, like last year, in mm -hmm. in June. So there was still a lot of like limbo with the um, with the pandemic, right. where things were kind of opening up but not a hundred percent. And in yeah. my country, there were still like regulations about. Um, they would use like the last name, the last number of your ID, mm -hmm. and they would um, use it as like, okay, so this day you can go into stores, and these other days you can't. Oh, I see. Yeah. So yeah. there, there was still like, yeah, you can go out, but there's so many regulations. I was like, I don't feel like going to college or university right in this moment. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I mean, not a bad time to take a gap year between college and, uh, and high school yeah um and how was uh and how was high school i guess um the high school experience in, oh, overall oh i hate it <laughs> honestly yeah. i was i i i was for i think almost my whole like primary and secondary school because here it doesn't divide you like there's no different schools for like let's say first grade to sixth grade and then that no, it's mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. a full on school and you can study in the same one since so every school is, to 11th grade so every school is a full school full yeah yeah it's like you start and you don't leave till you go to till you graduate from high school i see yeah exactly so i was on the same school i think since yeah since like the my last year of kindergarten until eighth grade because from sixth grade everything was going awful with like a lot of uh depression and anxiety and also like identity itself like it was just that age but mm -hmm. it interfered a lot with um yeah with how i was doing uh yeah. academically so i ended up switching to another school that i liked a lot more but i was still struggling so even though i felt more at home at that other place um it i still did so bad that it made no sense staying there mm -hmm. and we ended up 
looking if there was like a, another way I could go to school that didn't meant physically. <laughs> yeah. Because like now looking back, I realized there was a lot of sensory overload for me, apart from all the uh, mental health the issues. Mm-hmm. I, I also just realized like I cannot go into a classroom and have someone uh, uh, like passing the page and listening to that like a thousand times louder and then someone clicking their pen on the other side right. and there was so many things going on I was like I'm, I'm not doing well and this is not helping at all yeah um they ended up switching to um online online school and mm-hmm. I immediately like that immediately just went a thousand times better like my grades mm. and my everything just mm. did uh yeah like much 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 better and i stopped hating um the idea of school so much mm-hmm. i was mm-hmm. like okay well, now that i know that i can study and do the same thing but in the comfort of my of my room and if i want to play music in the background, I can, um, or if I just want it to be completely silent, which doesn't tend to be the case, right? Um, I can do that. Like I can just decide it. Or if I'm feeling like well, I'm not, like I, I don't think I can do this today, so I'm not in the mood to write an essay. Then I can, I can decide to take that day off. So it right. felt really liberating in in that way where. It, it didn't feel like um, taking care of my needs to pay attention would interrupt the needs of other people. Because again, yeah, sure. I didn't want to hear uh, the the paper when I turned the page. I could just have music, and I wouldn't hear it. Or, so you're um, you're bothered even by your own your own page turning. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm even bothered by anything? my own chewing. Okay. A lot of well, times. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Does it give you problems like when you're going to sleep or anything too? Like breathing sounds? Mm, breathing, not so much. Okay. But I feel like, <laughs> yeah, I feel like other sounds yeah. that are not noticeable the rest of the day, especially because of the area I live in. Other sounds that I would never notice at night where it's everything's so silent i'm like oh that makes sound like that <laughs> it yeah. produces a noise i wow i hate it yeah is it chewing pretty often like your own your own sounds that you make um or is it just you know certain foods maybe or mm, i would say certain foods because mm. it's, it's similar with other people like i am um i don't tend to eat with my family even not mm-hmm. even before i i kind of realized like well i don't like uh, to hear people chew or um yeah. how spoons and things like that sound when they hit um right. when they hit a, a plate I, we just never like in my house we really never got used to eating together we like mm-hmm. we've always i've lived uh, always with my mom and my brother yeah, and we've always just when we wanted to eat, we would just serve some food and go to our rooms and eat there. <laughs> gotcha. That's just like normal. Um, yeah. Or any of your family members have sensitivities too? I'm just curious if that maybe was wasn't just your decision. Mm, I feel like it wasn't a decision. <laughs> really. No. Yeah. It was just it was just culture. Your kind house. Of, yeah. Yeah. And, and no, and not even culture because here people do eat together. Right. No, I, I meant. I right, had that I struggle you're... when I go to my grandfather's grandfather's house. Where I'm like, yeah. oh, he he does feel like it's rude if I don't go and eat, like have lunch or dinner with them at the table. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in my house, I don't know. We just, I I guess we didn't like it or we didn't really yeah. see a sense and. Uh, I'm really picky with food, so sometimes my food would take longer to, like my mom would take longer to make my food, or I would make myself something different. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, we, like we kind of just had our own thing, so we never 
decided to go sit on the table together. We just kind of like, well, I'm hungry at this time of the day, so I'm going to eat at this time of the day. (laughs) Does your family know that you have misophonia? Um, My mom does because I still live with her. But my brother, my brother I've kind of hinted at, especially mm. posting lots of like things on my Instagram stories yeah. that I know right. yeah, that I know he's gonna see. Yeah. Like yeah. I know yeah. it. I can't just post them to see like he gets the hint. Um but because I don't live with him anymore and I realized recently I've never really gotten to like sit down with him and be like, Yeah, I, I realized I I'm not like just irritated by I don't know that noise or things like like I'm genuinely uh, like angered or I feel anxious about specific noises and specific patterns and, and, and yeah like I I felt I've done it with people I know I'm going to be around uh, a lot with mm-hmm. and my brother just left at that time. So I never got to sit with him and tell him, like, you're doing this sound and that is really bothering. Yeah, you figured it. Yeah, you're not going to see him as often anymore if you're not going to yeah, him. So, so it, what's the point? It doesn't and... make, yeah, but my, my mom does. My, and, uh, what did I, she say when you told her? Or how did you tell her? I, it, I, it, she was quite curious about it. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, I told her, like, yeah, I find out this this thing and I was just curious about it because I I tend to do that I tend to find um, like a topic just a topic and I end up reading a bunch about it and I tell her later like hey I found this and, and that so like well I was doing what I always do with <laughs> yeah stuff, with new stuff I found and I was gonna tell you about it um as like a casual thing and then the more I read the more I realized that it felt like it was describing me <laughs> yeah had you been uh, diagnosed with other things in the past um, like um, I don't know things like OCD or anxiety and ADD things like that or was um, this kind of the first one of your first mental health it sounds like you have you know it's been kind of a, a maybe a, uh, maybe you know it's not, it's not like maybe you've had other experiences no, I, I was already diagnosed, and I think at around when I was 14, 14, mm-hmm. 15 maybe, with depression mm-hmm. um, and gender dysphoria. Mm-hmm. And from there, yeah, like, especially with the depression, the most of the different uh, doctors we we went to, they were like, well, I don't think you have OCD, but you do have a lot of, like, personality traits so like it, it doesn't interrupt your life like ocda does but you do have a lot of traits that could be maybe that misdiagnosis that so be careful if if like if someone if you go to someone and they diagnose you with ocd because if if it's not um making your life harder then it's just kind of your personality. <laughs> mm, gotcha. Um, and, and did you ever bring up sound issues with them? Um, I think I didn't. I think mm-hmm. I did bring up feeling overwhelmed. Yeah. Like sensory of like yeah, in a sensory way. But yeah, because it was diagnosed so young. Um and and I got to, also I got to try a lot of antidepressants. I think three or four. That at the time the focus was kind of that. Mm-hmm. The focus mm-hmm. was okay. You, uh, you have a quite a severe depression. Also very young, so we have to treat this as soon as possible, and we have right. to make sure you're kind of learn how to cope with it right now, so later in life it doesn't get as hard to change things mm-hmm. to to make it easier for you. So, yeah, I think, at, yeah, again, at that point, I never, I just, at, at that point, everything was really heavy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I think I didn't realize that sound 
was one of those things and and that it was like this specific sounds and this other not i like to me just everything was so much all the time mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. i never brought it up and that's i think that's kind of why i realized it uh more recently because um yeah i've gotten much better i'm on medication i've done quite enough therapy to feel better so i have time to kind of look back on the things that I've realized that haven't gotten better. So like, okay, now I can go into the more specifics and I realize, hey, sound is one of those. Yeah, well, I was going to ask, like, yeah, did, did the other um, feelings of sensory overload get better? And then you were kind of left with misophonia. I'm curious um, where kind of misophonia sits in relation to the other things you're, you're feeling or, or dealing with. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I think that's kind of what I've been, um, looked into it in the first place. Cause, cause yes, I, I always thought I was just like very sensitive and like irritable again, mostly <laughs> because of depression and because I was a teenager, <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I was like, well, I'm just, and, and because everyone tells you that, well, you're just in the age where you hate everything. Right. Right. And I was like, well, I don't hate everything. It's just this, I just feel overwhelmed. <laughs> right, right. And so, yeah, a lot of things. I mean, people touching me or hugging mm -hmm. me, that is still mm -hmm. kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, I've learned kind of how to, like, where I'm more comfortable and where, like, I can okay, maybe hook someone that I don't know, but not feel like I'm going to die. <laughs> right. Like I'm getting the plague or something. Like I realize I can manage it uh, much better, even if I'm still a bit touchy, uh, but not pun intended, touchy about people touching yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, all the other, again, like all that overwhelmness, just has left uh, mostly and so it felt like that was new but mm -hmm. not really i just was aware mm -hmm. that um uh, that yeah that it wasn't just depression or, or being a teenager that uh, this there's just this noises that it feels like i can't that they still feel that overwhelming and yeah, and, I, it, and it didn't stop and uh, w w how did that? Uh, when did you, do you remember when you kind of roughly when you first started here um, getting sensitive to noises in particular? Uh, was it at, at home um, uh, with family members? Like it kind of often is, or or was it uh, a different path? Um, I think funny enough, it was when all this craze began with ASMR. That uh, everyone suddenly everything on youtube was asmr and everyone was like oh my god i found this and it helps me sleep or it helps me relax and stuff like that and because the internet just kind of end up like um introduced to that content wanted or not um and and yeah so because everywhere you went on the internet there was some form of ASMR content video, whatever. And I heard, I was like, oh, why do people like this? This is too much. This is yeah. disgusting. This sounds awful. Yeah. And so, yeah, I thought I just hated ASMR. Um, and, 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 and yeah, I think I, I slowly started realizing that other noises would cause me that same reaction. Right, Not so much right. that that um, someone made them, and I realized what I like. I realized it was the same reaction that I got when I heard people really close to the microphone chewing or breathing or uh, um, like clicking stuff. And I was like, okay, so this is I'm getting the same feeling. It's not just these videos or the fact that it's to a microphone. It's just that noise that is causing that right 
<laughs> so you're able to kind of well when it's ASMR videos, you're able to just kind of avoid them, hopefully, <laughs> eventually <Yeah>. online. <laughs> but in real life, how were you? How were you? Were you dealing with it by just kind of reacting? Like how how did that? Uh, how yeah? How were you? Um, how are you reacting to to sounds in, in now in real life? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the for I think the that first year maybe, mm -hmm. um, again even so I kind of connected the dots of okay it's not it's Mars this noises, I still felt like maybe I was being like sensitive to them, mm -hmm. or that I was in a bad mood and that's why, uh, they were making me feel yeah like very angry like that's the thing it it tends to trigger anger on me mm -hmm. I, I i don't really sometimes i do feel like very anxious but most of the time it's anger and so yeah i thought maybe i'm just in like a bad mood and or i'm being sensitive even though i was kind of connecting the dots so i would yeah i would just kind of react and um i think Again, a, a bit inside of the ASMR trace, um, I was watching a live stream, and it was a game theory. I don't know if you if you know that channel, but it was like a it's the guy from Game Theory and okay. his wife, and they were gonna do like one of these dumb challenges and I was just like yeah fun video and before they start they mentioned that his wife Steph uh, has misophonia so uh, they know that's gonna like that that was gonna be hard for her because they were gonna try and play like ASMR videos and see Ooh. like which ones got her and I was like oh, that's okay <laughs> that, like that's a word and i just yeah i just kind of at that uh, when i first saw it i was like i didn't think much about it i was like oh she has something and she doesn't like yeah. it more because of that and i did for some reason i didn't connect it to me <laughs> um but then they play like i think it was like someone eating fish or something like that mm -hmm. and again like i wasn't aware that that was gonna be that was gonna have the same reaction as her, but I almost had the same reaction. She was about to throw up, right. and at the and while I was watching that, I also felt like I was gonna throw up from hearing. I wasn't even looking; I was just hearing yeah. at it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I kind of rewinded it because I was like, "Well, she's having kind of the same reactions as, as me. Like I, I see her, and and I'm like, whoa, that like someone's feeling the same with the." very similar sounds so i rewind it to when they say that she has misophonia and i started looking it up mm -hmm. and that's when i'm like okay that's huh, interesting again not connecting the dots until i read more and and i realized yeah this is this is me and her reaction was also me and from from there i i, I think i read as well i i can maybe look for noises that um cancel these other ones out or or like a way to fidget maybe um mm. and i'm really i was really used to wearing headphones anyways so i just thought that it's like an opportunity like well people are, people are around me are used to me always having headphones on so i'm gonna take advantage of that and i'm gonna try and and maybe find music or noises or something else that cancels out when someone or something is creating a noise. So right, I can so, not react as, as I yeah. have been in the past. Right. So, so yeah, you're one of your big coping mechanisms, like many of us, is uh, headphones, earbuds, and just a bunch of sounds too to mask yeah. over things yeah, yeah. and funny uh, enough like these fidget toys that a lot of people were just yeah, like yeah, they were spinners. fun right. I, I i i also have i have like three and i also bought them like bought them because they were fun <laughs> and then i realized wait this is relaxing 
is it relaxing or does it like distract you from the sound or just the repetitive motion is something that you're controlling maybe um, um I feel like, yeah, maybe it's because just all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's mostly that, first of all, like distracting, um, because, yeah, because my hands are doing something. So that helps me kind of, I, I feel like that helps me release whatever right. feeling through my hands. So, so yeah, I would feel it's mostly, yeah, like, um, distracting me to like spin something or with this new ones or I forgot how they're called this like pop thingies you know okay yeah I don't know like the, the bubble pop thingies uh, i think gotcha. i hear those <laughs> that was those ones are also really nice and i just find myself just kind of popping them and, and again kind of distracting the rest of my body uh, gotcha. on it Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Um, yeah. it, and other than your mom, have you told anybody about misophonia in your family or anywhere around uh, or therapists over there in Colombia? Mm. Um, I think I realized when I wasn't going to a therapist anymore. I, lately, I've been wanted to to also see that with like a professional because mm -hmm. even though, uh, like like you say, most most of us find a way to just cope with it without going to anyone. Um, with, yeah, with like this kind of obvious ways of, well, uh, headphones or fidgety toys. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like it would also help to have someone that's a professional maybe help me or maybe even mm -hmm. uh, see if they know about it. Cause yeah, I'd be curious to know if somebody in Colombia, like how, how, how well known it is in Colombia. Yeah, because if it's hard to find professionals that know about in the U.S. Uh, it's hard enough, yeah, right. Yeah, I would imagine <laughs> here they have no clue what I'm really yeah. talking about. Yeah. Like, well, it does it have like a, least... a Spanish translation, which is a good stuff. Sometimes uh -huh. you find things that don't even have a word in Spanish yet. Because right. that's how known they are. But it does have a Spanish word, so that kind of relaxes me. That, okay, at least the Spanish speaking community even if it's just in spain or mexico or maybe a bigger country at least they know that All right that's like a thing but but yeah i've been meaning to maybe go to someone like a professional but apart from that yeah i just can tell people that yeah i'm gonna live with or gonna be around with a lot um like my yeah what do you uh, tell them my boyfriend uh -huh. Well, I just don't like, hey, I have this thing, it's called misophonia, and you, I, I, I don't... Just shut the hell up. <laughs> no, 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 like, I don't think you even know it, but I'm going to yeah. assume it as, like, a lot of times are really annoying. So if I lash out at you, which is very probable, it's because you were making a noise, but then I'll apologize because I'll feel bad and I'll tell you very politely this time that you were <laughs> doing an annoying Right. Time. Yeah. <laughs> like I tell you again, but this time without making you feel bad about it. How do people? How do people react when you do kind of like lash out and throw glares or say something? Um, I think I think gladly I haven't had that situation with with my partner. I I I was able to very calmly just kind of realize like, hey, I should tell him this just in case. And I told him mm -hmm. in a very calm, no, kind of because the trigger happened, just kind of letting you know. Right. Um, but uh, with my little sister, I they have to like explain it to her, like right after I lashed out and told her to shut the fuck up. How old is <laughs> and she? And then I realized like, oh no, <laughs> she's eight. Yeah. So I realized, oh, okay. like, oh god, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, like, what yeah, have I done? Yeah. And then, like, of course, I apologized to her and to my mom. Mm -hmm. It was like, I'm sorry. And my mom, um, like, for my walk, my mom helped me explain mm -hmm. it to her. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not, it's not that you're being annoying. It's that you're making this sound, and that sound is very distressing. And sometimes, yeah. depends on her mood. She kind of remembers and doesn't do it, or she remembers and does it on purpose. <laughs> oh yeah okay okay because again she's a little 
she's a little yeah. child, so right. I, I, I know she's not doing it to be rude, more because she's my sister, and she finds yeah. it funny to annoy me. Right. Um, right. And doesn't realize, like, the actual anxiety or, like, the stress that it could cause. Mm -hmm. She just says, like, ha, that's an annoying thing I can do. Mm -hmm. Do you know anybody else who, who has this phone here? Um, like in real I, life, no, I know I online, so. obviously. Okay. No, online, yeah. yeah, but I think I think not. Yeah, I think yeah. I I have encountered people like, well, of course, people chewing is annoying. It's like, no, no, right. but you're talking about people chewing with their mouth open. I'm talking about chewing. Yeah, yeah. That's even it. the quietest, even the quietest chewing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like sometimes to put it on their perspective, I tell them, I. I hate my own crunchy chewing. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I mean when I hate chewing. I mean it as I even hate my own chewing. And they're like, oh, okay. Because, yeah, because they say it as like, well, they're just saying that annoying signs are annoying. Right. No. It, it, it's not as simple as that. Do you do anything when you're eating to kind of like help, your, help you not trigger yourself? Like maybe certain foods that you won't eat or certain foods that you'll definitely mm -hmm. eat? I mean, the, the thing is that here, most foods are fried. We like making fried foods. <laughs> right, so that, that means <laughs> For it's going to be dry, crunchy. So they tend to be the, yeah, the crunchy ones. I'm not going to stop eating them because they're really good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I tend to avoid eating them like in silent places or like when when I'm alone. Like let's say something as simple as like a cereal. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I would not eat my cereal until I've sit like sitting down here on my desk, put, put in on my headphones, play, a, I don't know, a music, a video, a podcast, something. And then I start eating because uh, I've tried being like, no, no, I can, I can do it without that. And I take one bite and I notice I, without really thinking about it, I noticed that I started like trying to chew really softly. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when I like the, the that's of course not gonna work if I try chewing like really softly, really uh, tiny. So yeah. I just I just put on headphones or maybe if I'm outside sometimes, like when I eat outside um not in like a restaurant but in like in the street when you buy like street food. Right. Because there's so much noise, I don't tend to notice my like my trip. Yeah, there's on the cars street, and whatever. A lot of white noise and background noise, yeah. Yeah, and I also tend to wear like earbuds when I'm outside. So, yeah, I find I I find that funny enough. The when there's the most sounds is when I can ignore. Yeah. Kind of the 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 eating the the crunchy. Eating, Your own crunchiness, right, right. Yeah, or okay. like other people, but again, or I people. don't tend to eat with other people ever. Yeah. <laughs> with your uh, partner, do you eat? Do you both eat together, or? Um, no. Like, I mean, we because we have never like lived together. Mm -hmm. It's just like visits. Right. Um, I think yeah. Sometimes like eating in, in for me, but. I remember that when I told her, I was like, well, I'm really used to eating softly. Mm -hmm. And, and well, he's not wrong because, again, I've never noticed his eating. Well, that's good. Um, hmm? That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, I think I realized, like, well, he's right. I've never noticed Yeah. when he's, like, when he's sitting in front of me or around me. And um, yeah, I, I think I would have remembered him eating maybe something crunchy or like that because it would be ingrained in my memory as yeah. awful. <laughs> right. But yeah, I think he never did. I do have a struggle with, um, I, I go a lot on, on Discord, on voice chats, mm -hmm. um, and I've gotten this very, like basically every night even, I go with the same group of friends um, and just chat, I don't know, around five hours, maybe. Wow. And yeah, like we're just, because we all go from like school or or, or work or existing mm -hmm. and we mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. want to 
chat with each other and, and be dumb for a little bit and and yeah because i spend so many so much time with them in a format that is only audio where i'm mostly just hearing them um yeah i, I have to I, I remember i had to tell them like hey i i, I had this thing some noises annoy me and i did it because one of them has a keyboard oh, like yeah. those mechanical keyboards and those are probably one of my most awful triggers I, right. I, I I don't even have a mechanical keyboard. I specifically bought one that is a silent one <laughs> because mm -hmm. of that, because of how much I hate the sound of keyboards. And your keyboard is exactly the opposite. It does, like, it's so noisy. She'll be, we will be on, uh, like, chatting, and she'll be writing, like, a story. I think she she likes to write a lot. So she will be writing while being on the call, and, and I, I couldn't pay attention to the other ones because I would just hear the right and very fast also. So I, I, at one point, um, instead of just muting her, and every time someone said something to her or muting her, <laughs> I right. realized this is it's more productive if I just tell them. Right. Um, so yeah, and I, I kind of had a chat. Um... Most of them were really receptive. They were really like, okay. Like, they're kind of trying to be like, okay, what can we avoid? Um, one of them tried playing ASMR to see if, if it was real. I don't know why. Oh, oh no. <laughs> and I was like, yes, it is. Just shut up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I Like, I make someone sign a paper if you want to stop. <laughs> Right. And another friend got extremely curious immediately. Like, not just as, like, trying to see what noises he shouldn't be doing, but he just wanted to, to, to know. Like, he was asking me every single noise he could imagine and asking me, would that, would that annoy you? And I was like, no, I don't think so. Like, okay. But then, would this annoy you? And I was like, yeah, that does. Mm. He's like, but those ones are really similar. Like, yeah, but my brain just likes one and the other right. and not the other <laughs> right so i i can appreciate it that I, I don't know about other people with misophonia but i i appreciate when we get really curious about it mm -hmm. and yeah very a lot of very like a child it. right a lot of people just dismiss it so it's it's good to at least have people if they, as long as they're not being mean about it that they're asking yeah, yeah. questions because that yeah. gets the word around um what do you hope to do kind of in the future you hope to kind of uh you know build a graphic design business or um <laughs> you know because uh, yeah this is when a lot of us are thinking about like ooh, ee, where do i want to work like do i want to be around yeah, tons like, of other people <laughs> uh funny enough i want to work on the movie industry but mm -hmm. i feel like um it's because um, no, of course not only because I love movies, I've loved them since like ever, and I just love art. And, and, and movies have always been kind of one of the ways to sit down after again being overwhelmed or yeah. or feeling like everything is just chaos. Kind of just sitting down and looking at a story, and it's all pretty, and <laughs> or it's all like really dramatic, and you're kind of um into it i i've liked the side of the production of of movies and funny enough how much attention they pay to making the noises um so i feel like um even so of course i wouldn't i probably would never work on the like sound department <laughs> ever because <laughs> i would just end up deleting noises that are supposed to be there <laughs> Um, yeah, I've never, I've never found myself being triggered in one of those settings, in like a recording or a, mm -hmm. or like a casting or modeling kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I've never heard, uh, I don't know, like the clicking of a camera or that kind of things that, that tend to be on a studio, uh, never found it annoying. And so I've realized like, well, I can't. For my luck, I, I like something 
that does not make me want to take my ears off. <laughs> right, right. Okay, so yeah, yeah maybe there's a promising path there in kind of a, uh, yeah, film production or video production or something. Um, yeah, that, that sounds, yeah, that sounds, that sounds interesting. Maybe you can uh, slip a little message about misophonia in some one of your yeah, in yeah. the productions you're involved in. Um, yeah, so we're, yeah, we're about, um, I don't know, yeah, we're about 40, 40 minutes in. Um, yeah, 40. Just curious, yeah, if you have any, um, yeah, anything else you want to share with people that, you know, maybe are specific to your experience with misophonia that uh, you think people haven't heard before or just, yeah, just anything you want to say, really? <laughs> um, maybe like a, uh, a recommendation because I've realized that, um, it's very even if there's always going to be people that are going to react either by like making fun of nor of, or not believing it um a lot of times you find that people even if they don't understand it or mm -hmm. can't put themselves 100 percent in your shoes they they do try they do immediately try to not trigger you so so i found that yeah even so sometimes and sometimes it feels like oh, I don't want to tell people because yeah. maybe we feel like oh they're gonna think I'm like crazy or that I have anger issues or something like that um because it's normal to be afraid of people judging you um I feel like yeah, it's always better uh, to be in an environment where, where you can't tell people and if they accidentally make a trigger sound they kind of know and they kind of realize like oops and mm -hmm. try and stop it and if someone's gonna make like fun of it that's that's kind of really fucked up <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> so it makes no yeah i i know it can be kind of yeah kind of hard and kind of mm, like demoralizing to feel like you have to tell people but mm -hmm. yeah sometimes it's just better to let people know and if someone's gonna be an asshole about it, like that's the problem. This is like they're the assholes, you're just trying to live your life. Right, right. Um, so yeah, I, I found I, I, I think that should be something that like the misophonia community should have more into account. Like we can just tell people and if they wanna be assholes, that's their own that's an issue, but most people are going to try to, to, uh, not trigger us because, yeah, because I realize like there, most of the times you end up telling people because you lash out of them. So they, right. they've seen that you're it's kind real. Of forced to. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they, they've seen that it's real, that you're not acting up. You're not like pretending you're not trying to, to gain, I don't know, like sympathy points. Like you genuinely had a reaction out of it they're right. probably gonna be like oh so they weren't being mean they like I, they cannot control their like how they feel about this noise that i made and they're gonna stop so yeah i uh, that, that that's kind of uh, what i <laughs> what i want to live with yeah, a, no a little bit of a yeah i was like okay sometimes you feel crazy but it's just it's, it just ends up being better. It ends up being easier, and and at the end of the day, you always have headphones <laughs> right, <laughs> that you can right. put in and right. <laughs> and ignore everyone around. No, I mean that's uh, yeah, that's exactly what I think a lot of us uh, end up thinking is like, uh, um, yeah, we have headphones with a backup, and uh, mm -hmm. you know, try to tell people if it's if it's. Uh, if it's necessary, like you decided with your brother, it wasn't quite necessary just yet to tell him because you're not going to be around him that often anymore. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and then, yeah, I mean, I think we're all aware that, you know, the, uh, you never know who's going to, well, you got to think about who's, who's going to um, react favorably and who's going to just kind of make fun of it. And then is it worth bringing it up? So, yeah. Yeah. yeah it's either kind of like, is it worth bringing it up? <laughs> and if I bring it up and I think this person's going to, react well and they don't so yeah again do as like with someone that doesn't know mm -hmm. because they're pretending like like that's not real so it's like if they didn't know and right. just yeah keep coping like yeah, I, I feel that we're gonna get direction 
where there's more studies about it and there's slowly like um like communities and stores even mm -hmm. and just yeah where where we're kind of a lot of people are realizing by themselves so they're we're joining as like well other people have it and we're creating right. Right. um things that help us or things that already exist and feeling like hey i found that this helps me so i'm going to share it with the rest of the community because it might help maybe five or ten or a hundred of them yeah. um to just grow yeah again maybe with like this fidget spinners and this the like pop toys that they were supposed to be for more like adhd and um and other types of uh neurodivergency well we realized well that also helps misophonia so yeah uh, i'm glad we're kind of in that space where yeah no yeah as i as said the misophonia community and that's like well there's other communities that have stuff that kind of help that whole whole realm of neurodivergency in yeah. whatever way um it is so so i think we're uh lucky even though there's a lot to uh unpack still and to maybe study and 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 to understand a bit better we are in a good place where we have things and and i think it's nice to be in a place where you're also discovering how to how to deal with stuff because you can again you can share it with um other people and and it goes from a range of very accessible things like again earbuds or a f five dollar toy <laughs> right to yeah to uh, like noise canceling uh headphones that are three hundred dollars that hey you can spend your time and your money on it that's amazing um but yeah you have that whole range and you have people that are also realizing maybe you know, so you can land a hand i don't know i think i think it's i, I like this point, this sweet point of uh we already know what it is we have some resources and we're still finding some um so we we, we are kind of part of the of the path for when maybe mr fogna is 100 percent like um culpable and like easy to talk thing especially with therapists or professionals and all professionals kind of know about it and it's not a struggle to find one that knows like yeah wait 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 i like to say it as we're going towards that and we're helping someone live that and yeah then, no it's, you're right it's still early but uh you're right it's a lot better than it was uh like yeah. even 10, 20 years ago, especially a few decades ago when, uh, you yeah, know, I've had absolutely. some people who are over 60, over 70, even even over 80. And so totally different world <laughs> about yeah. anything mental health related. So, yeah. And again, um, we can we can help. And, and like you say, sometimes you notice that um, misophonia is maybe related to to other things, maybe mm -hmm. like depression or ADHD or autism or whatever. Like it can be related to anything. Um, so so yeah we're it feels like you're helping a lot of communities and a lot of people in different areas and and like you say that uh, we we're better than before and we are also in a space where it's not um seen as like a waste of time to work on making it even better mm -hmm. and, and yeah I, I hope we can work so we can work yeah. like that <laughs> and actually achieve that that's great yeah that's a good uh positive point to kind of end on um i wanted to yeah do you have any um thing you want to um promote like uh, i don't know like a, your instagram account for your design stuff uh, i'll have links in the show notes but you know if you want to mention anything right um, now feel free well i i, I have my red bubble i i was thinking oh, yeah. actually going towards this i was thinking about maybe trying to do the designs mm -hmm. related to misophonia um because i guess that thanks to this podcast i realized there's a lot more people than you realize mm -hmm. um and and yeah i think it's always fun to 
to have the signs of other things that maybe have hurt you. So yeah. you can laugh at them now or you can kind of, uh, yeah, see them as something more, more positive. So, yeah, I, 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 I'm trying to work on more mental health related designs to maybe kind of, yeah, create that. So, yeah, I have my red bubble. I think the it's a red bubble that comes slash uh, taco cat boy boy with an I instead of a Y. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and I think I have the rest of my social media. It's just that the rest is not really <laughs> support you related. So sure. Yeah, I have that. Oh, I have a YouTube, and I'm trying to work on maybe someone likes uh, mythology. Uh, so if, if someone uh, funny enough likes mythology and also has misophonia <laughs> I'm also working on that <laughs> oh, <very> cool. <laughs> like creating okay. mythology related content that hopefully, hopefully does not trigger <laughs> anyone, yeah, yeah, yeah. anyone's misophonia um, by my- mythology do you mean um, like myths from the past or is it something that yeah uh, like uh, Greek um, yeah, 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 of course, right. Norse, yeah. Have you found yeah, that, any evidence of uh, misophonia in older older literature like that? Um, not so far, but I've okay. realized there's a lot of things that now we have a name for mm-hmm. that uh, a lot of mythology touches on mm-hmm. as like a wow, fantastic or like a weird mm-hmm. thing. And now we have a name for it. So, so maybe, maybe I cross one. But, but yeah, I, yeah, I, I kind of hear about it if you do find something. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of, I kind of want to touch on that and how I found that there's a lot of little details that now you will be like, hey, I think that has a name. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, maybe, maybe some of Mesopotamia that has some other thing also finds it in in, in a myth. So uh, yeah, well, I think yeah. that I want to plug. I just have my ripple. <laughs> my YouTube. I'll have links to all that. Yeah, definitely yeah. In the show notes. And if you know between now and when this goes live, just just shoot me an email or Instagram oh, yeah. message, and I'll 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 have it all included. So that right now, well, people are listening to it. Or, you know, when people are listening to it, they'll be able to just go to show notes and, and link, uh, click on stuff. So you you got some yeah. time. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. <laughs> So yeah, well, uh, yeah, Nathan, I want to, yeah, thank you for coming on and kind of sharing your story. It's super interesting. And uh, yeah, I know it's going to, yeah, I know it's going to help a lot of people and uh, wish you the best of luck in, uh, yeah, in your design stuff and in getting the word out in Colombia and beyond. Yeah, well, thank you very much, not only for having me, but for creating the podcast. I think it's a really nice space. It feels really, yeah, really comforting. So, yeah, just so you know that you're also creating a, 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 a nice space just for people that already know it, maybe for people that don't know yet and, and hear yeah. those experiences. And, and like I did, realize like, hey, that's that's exactly how I feel. And it has yep. a name. I'm glad it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah. The, the just whole wanted point. To, to also congratulate you on, on that because the podcast doesn't seem like much, but it, 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 it does spread a lot of word around and, and that seems to be a big help thank you nathan don't forget to check out nathan's links in the show notes for more if you liked this episode don't forget to leave a quick review or just hit the five stars wherever you listen to this podcast you can hit me up by email at hello at misophoniapodcast.com or go to the web, go to the website podcast.com. it's even easier to send a message on instagram at misophoniapodcast follow there facebook twitter Um, if you want you can support the show by visiting the patreon page at patreon.com slash misophonia podcast the music as always is by moby and until next week wishing you peace and quiet